Our scripture from this morning comes from Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in the territory of Judea, during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem, and they asked, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east, and we have come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked them where the Christ child was to be born. And they said, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote. For you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you the least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, one whom will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child, and when you have found him, report to me, so that I too may go and honor him. And when they heard the king, they went and they looked. The star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. And then they opened their treasure chest and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. Let us pray. Holy Lord, we give you thanks for this, your word, and we ask, Lord, that you would open our hearts to your word and your message. Amen. So today is the first day of the year, a day that we come to worship in this beautiful space. It is filled with so much history and beauty. It is a reminder of all that has gone on before us here at Forest Hill. Those who have given their tithes, their gifts, their time, their prayers, their sweat and tears to create and sustain this place. We come to worship to remember who we are and also to look forward to all the places that God calls us to in the year ahead. This is not only the first Sunday of 2023, but it is also the Sunday between Christmas Day and Epiphany, when we pause to think about the wise men traveling to meet Jesus. These wise men, they were looking for a revelation from God. They kept their watch as to what God was doing in the darkness of each night. And when they found a beautiful star, they went to the east to see what it was all about. They left what they were doing to journey to the star in hopes that they would find the revelation of God. Now we know, because of science, that it takes many years for the light of a star to reach the earth from the time that it originates so far away. So those wise men, they were actually looking backward in time to see what God was revealing in that moment on earth. I love that image, looking back to see what God has done so that we can see clearly what God is doing in this moment in our lives. And so as we start this new year, I think it's important that we remember our story, the story of this community of faith, how God has sustained us and loved us, graced us and called us, and it is from that place that we will continue to see where God leads us going forward. Forest Hill Methodist Church came into being in 1888. Forest Hill got its name because this was the place in this tiny piece of property was known as Forest Hill. We were not yet part of the big city of Concord, which is just a few blocks south on Union Street. We were something different. We were Forest Hill. Today you can see the marker explaining what Forest Hill was right up here at the stoplight of Buffalo and Union. Forest Hill Methodist Church was created for the workers of Lock Mill. The owners of the mill felt it was really important for their workers to have a place to worship. And this congregation was supported and well-funded 
by the O'Dell family. Forest Hill, from our very beginning, was a working class church. Forest Hill understood the need to care for each other in the community in which they lived. And this sense of mission has always been a core value of who we are and continue to be. This church has sought to be a place of radical welcome for our community. And while the church has changed a lot over the years since 1888, we continue to hold on to the love of God, the importance of being missionally engaged in our community, and the gift of welcoming everyone. For me, I have seen this played out in many times and spaces, but there are a few times that rise to the top of understanding what this love and welcome looks like here at Forest Hill. One of those moments was at a funeral uh, by a matriarch of the church, Sarah Smith. We affectionately called her, as, called her Mama Sarah. And the Smith family has been a part of this church for many generations. And Forest Hill has helped form their lives for decades. When E.Z. Smith stood up and talked about his mother at the funeral, he talked about how she loved people well. How there were really no limits to Mama Sarah's love. And I knew what he was saying was true because Mama Sarah loved me well. I have often thought about Mama Sarah and all of her love for the many people in the very different places in her life, the joy that radiated out of her spirit, and the way that she welcomed everyone into her church, her home, and her heart. I can't help but believe that part of that love and that joy, it came from her relationship with God and the teaching of this church. And she gave that spirit of love back to the church as she taught us how to love lavishly through her words and actions and the ways in which she invested in the lives of those in this church. Forest Hill is what it is today because of the many people just like Mama Sarah who knew God's love deeply and spread wisdom and grace and nurtured others in the faith. About five years ago, I was invited to a showing of some pictures from the Lawson Bonds Photography Studio, which was owned and operated until 1988 by Lawson and Matt Bonds. They were members of Forest Hill. And while I was perusing the pictures, I came across this picture of Forest Hill. And it was on the cover of a bulletin, and it says, Forest Hill Methodist Church, where you are always welcome. I found Robert Burridge, who is a lifelong Forest Hiller and a local Concord historian, and I said to Robert, I have to have this picture. I want this picture to hang in my office. So a few weeks later, after pulling some strings, Robert came into my office with this picture. It was enlarged, bigger than it was on the cover of that bulletin, and he handed it to me. I framed it, and still today it hangs on my office wall to remind me and anyone who graces my office of the long-standing welcome of the people of Forest Hill. It's something that's important to us. It's our value. This church, it has given the gift of grace and love and welcome to our community for 135 years. We are far from perfect. We have seen our share of hard times. Just in my time here, we have lived through political upheaval in our country that spilled out into all parts of our life. We have had to navigate the stress and uncertainty of a pandemic when we weren't able to worship together and we longed to be the gathered body of Christ. And at this moment, in the United Methodist Church, we are watching as local congregations around us argue over who is fully accepted as children of God, and our hearts ache. Like all churches, we can hurt each other's feelings and speak before we think. And while we are not perfect, we know that God calls us to perfection, calls us to loving each other 
better than we are in this moment, or in our Wesleyan terms, we are continuing to be made perfect in love. Because we are called to be made perfect in love, we continue to strive to, be live, as, to live as faithful disciples, looking to God to guide and direct our steps, seeing what God has done and is doing in our life. I doubt that the wise men knew that they were looking to the night sky to see a light that had originated in galaxies beyond years before that moment. They might not have recognized the symbolism in that image, but they did know the importance of expectation. They looked to the night sky night after night, expecting something amazing to happen. And when it did, they did not miss it. So I come to this day, this day that we celebrate Epiphany, and I come with expectation. Expectation for what our year holds together in 2023. Looking back to remember how faithful God is, how much God has blessed us, how God has created within us, within us a spirit of love and grace, of welcome and mission, and holding that space of expectation. And I invite you to sit in that space of expectation with me, looking ahead, trusting that God will guide us in this new year and call us to unexpected places to share love, mercy, and grace with our world. And as we do that, we will continue to strive to be faithful disciples, growing in love and mercy and grace, moving on to perfection. Let us pray. Holy and loving Lord, we give you thanks that you love us as we are and you call us to be so much more. In this day, when we begin to think about the year that is ahead, fill us with expectation and anticipation. Give us the wisdom to look in the places for your love and your mercy and your grace. And when we see you move in our life, give us the courage to set out on uncertain journeys. For in those places, we will truly find your love and your grace. All this we pray in the strong and faithful name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen.